guys, so this is one of your guided practices. Some of you had it for homework um, and some have it for homework for Tuesday. So this, we're still solving multi-step equations, but now there are fractions. So the strategy that I taught you today and yesterday was to eliminate the fractions first before we start solving or simplifying each side. I know that some of you prefer to do it another way, which is totally fine. I'm just showing you this other one that we were practicing in class today. So here I notice that the denominators are two and four. So instead of making the other ones a fraction, I'm going to multiply so that I can eliminate this divided by two and divided by four, because ultimately a fraction is a division. So keep that in mind. So the inverse of divide by two would be to multiply by two, and the inverse of divided by four would be to multiply by four. However, I cannot multiply by different numbers like whenever I want. Remember I told you in class, like, oh, if you have this, right, and I decide to multiply this by two and not the rest, then it would no longer be true. But if I decide to multiply all of them by two, the same number, then the equation would be true again, okay? So keep that in mind with the real numbers that we went over. So going back to this, I have to find a number that would eliminate both the divided by two or the denominator of two and the divided by four or the denominator of four. That number in this case would be the least common multiple, which is four. So I'm gonna multiply everything by four, each term of the equation, just like I did here with the number, so I can keep the equality still there, okay? Here when I multiply the four by the one half, you can put it over one if that helps you out, okay? And remember that we can simplify when they are diagonal as well. Ignore the announcement if they so talk. Sorry about that, I'm still in school and announcements came in. So anyway, um, here we would simplify that by two. So here we would have a one and here we would have a two. That two and four got canceled out, right? Reduced, so they're gone. Okay, instead I have the two and the one that are still there. So two times one is two. So I would have two X. Over here it's easy. I'm just multiplying 10 times four, which would give me 40. So I'm done with that side of the equation. On this other side, I'm multiplying one fourth times four. So you can put it in times X because it's there over one. Remember, we can simplify diagonally. So this would become a one, that four is gone. This become a one, that four is gone. They simplified into one. So I'll just have those ones left over. So this would be one X. Over here, I'm just multiplying the 54 by four, and it would be 216. Once you do that, it becomes an easier equation. You clear the fractions first, and now you simplify each side. So I cover that and I notice that that simplified all the way already. I cover this and I notice that that simplified all the way already. So I'm ready to designate a side for the constants and a side for the variables. So I'm gonna do this, the variable side, and this will be the constant side, okay? These are my constants and my variables are here, okay? So that means that those I gotta move this way and this I gotta move the other way. So I'm gonna start with my variable. The two X is in the correct side of the variables, but the one X is not. Remember that when I'm switching sides, so the variables are in one side and the constants in the other, I'm only adding and subtracting. That, those are the two operations that I can use only. So when I move this one over to its right side, okay, or well, this time is the left, but when I move it to the correct side, I'm gonna do the inverse, either adding or subtracting. Since this is positive, I'm gonna do minus one X because I wanna zero it out on this side so it's no longer on that side, like the whole product of one X. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. Notice how I align it where the X's are. Over here, I still have 216. And over here, now I have two X minus one X. They are like terms, so I can combine them and I still have the plus 40. Now that I'm done with that step, all the variables are on the correct side, 
okay? But not all the constants are on the correct side. 216 is a constant and it's already there, but the plus 40 is not, so I gotta move it over. Okay, so I'm gonna do the inverse of plus 40, which would be minus 40. Here they zero out like I want it, and what I do to one side, I do to the other. I have one x left over here, and over here this is positive and negative, so I subtract, and then I will get 176 positive because the 216 is bigger. Here, you don't have to do this step because this is a one, but if you wanna show it, you divide by one to have the x by itself, and x equals 176. So that was the answer for this guided practice number one. I will also do guided practice number two. So guided practice number two for the packet for multi-step equations with fractions and decimals, this was the problem. Okay, so this we have a product. This, all of this is one term and this is another term, okay? So if I wanna simplify or eliminate the fraction, in other words, the decimal, if I wanna eliminate the divided by five, so I'm clear fractions, the inverse will be to multiply by five. So when I multiply by five, I have, I'm multiplying by five this whole term, so I'm done on this side. And I would have to also multiply this term by five so that I can keep the equality going. So over here is as if you're multiplying this together and diagonally these two cancel into one. They become a one when you divide them out. And I only have the three and the one left over. So I'll rewrite this, I have the three, and I still have the p minus three. And over here, it'll be negative 20. Now you're done with that. Now you can clear this up over here. This side does need simplifying, this one is done. So this one, I need to multiply that by that, which means I'm gonna have to use this derivative property, either with your arrows here or with the tabular method on the side, which is the box. Remember, there's no number, the coefficient is one. So this would be three P, and this would be negative nine. So this is what I write, what's inside, circled. So I would have three P minus nine equals negative 20. Now it just becomes a two-step equation. When the two-step equations, you can still designate a side for variables and for constants, but since your variable's already on this side, obviously this would be your variable because it's the only one and it's there already. So that means that by default, the other side has to be your constant side. So over here, the negative nine is on, on the wrong side. I gotta put it over here. And I do the inverse to zero it out. And I have three P on this side still there. And over here, I would have negative 11, okay? I still don't have the P by itself yet. So I have to undo this times three that's going on, so that p is free by itself. So the inverse of times three would be to divide by three. So when I divide by three, this becomes a one. You want it out. And what I do to one side, I do to the other to keep the equality. So p equals negative 11 over three. You can leave your answer like that. It is perfectly fine, okay? It is simplified all the way. You can also leave it as a mixed number. Here I wouldn't recommend you to do it in decimal because two thirds, uh, the decimal part would be an approximation of two thirds. Six repeating is an approximation, it's not exactly equal to two thirds. So these two answers in fraction and in mixed number are more true or are the real answer. This would be an approximated answer because two thirds, the six repeating is an approximation of two thirds. Okay, so I'll put this again really quick, and that would be your guided practice number two.